this is the new Land Rover Defender. It's one of the most hotly anticipated cars for a generation and it's finally here. In this video we're going to have a walk around outside, we're going to look inside and I'm going to tell you everything that you need to know about this new version of a legendary SUV. But before we get started make sure that you're subscribed to our channel because we have great new videos coming out every single week and of course if you want to buy a new Defender or any other off-roader or any new car at all go to whatcar.com to get the best deal. The Defender is one of the most iconic cars around, isn't it? So what a job it was for Land Rover to try and reinvent it for a 21st century modern version. But you can see they've done so by still incorporating some of those classic Defender design traits that we've become so used to over the years, like these round headlights at the front of the car. You can also see this really pronounced shoulder line down the side, which on the previous Defender was flatter, but here it's rounded off a bit more, which maybe gives it a slightly more attractive profile and also, I guess, helps with the aerodynamics as well. Further down here, you can see these Alpine lights up here. And also, look how cool is this? It's a three-door Defender. So this is the Defender 90. You can still get a three-door Defender, but if you want five doors, you can still go for the Defender 110. And if you come around the back, you can also see it has the classic rear mounted spare wheel. And isn't it cool that you can get those really nice looking steel wheels on a new Defender as well. And also the boot has a hinge on the side so that when you open it, it opens just as you'd expect a Defender's boot to open. But of course, whether Land Rover has done a good job with the new Defender is really, it's up to you, isn't it? So we want to know, vote in our poll, what is the best looking off-roader that you can buy now? Is it the new Land Rover Defender? the Mercedes G-Class, the Suzuki Jimny, or the Toyota Land Cruiser. Vote in our poll and let us know. So the styling may have been inspired by previous Defenders, but luckily the mechanicals are all completely different. So nothing's been carried over. That means it sits on a brand new platform, which is aluminium and should mean that it's nice and stiff. So it's safe, but also shouldn't weigh the car down massively too. It also has independent rear suspension with coil springs or air suspension that's available as well. And it has a monocoque chassis instead of the previous Defender's body on frame. Now, if none of that makes any sense to you, the only thing you really need to know is that the previous Defender was quite old school in the engineering that it used. But this new Defender is bang up to date. So it should be considerably more comfortable because of course the previous Defender had a brilliant off-road reputation, but even Land Rover itself admits it had some flaws on the road, to say the least. It was noisy, it wasn't particularly comfortable, it wasn't great to drive, but you can see they've gone back to the drawing board for the new Defender, so it has all the key elements that would suggest it will be significantly better as an on-road car. But of course, being good on-road is one thing. Really, this is a Defender, so lots of it comes down to how good it is off-road. Well, these are the key features that come with the Defender. Starting down here, Defenders on air suspension get a massive ground clearance of 291 millimeters. So it should be great for going over rocky terrain. And for reference, a G-Class has a ground clearance of around 200 millimeters. The Defender also has a very impressive wading depth of up to 900 millimeters. Look at it, it's fine. And that is the same as a Discovery and a Range Rover. And a G-Class, again for reference, can wade up to 700 millimeters. and it can tow up to an impressive 3,500 kilograms. It can carry up to 900 kilograms inside and with a roof tent accessory fitted, up to 300 kilograms on its roof. It also has Jaguar Land Rover's clear sight technology, which turns the rear view mirror into a screen that shows the view out the back of the car. And there's another clear sight ground view, which shows the hidden area directly ahead of the front wheels. Very useful for adventures over difficult surfaces. You can also see it has minimal front and rear overhangs, which is great for going up steep hills and down steep hills. As you'd expect, the Defender has permanent all-wheel drive and comes with a low-range gearbox. It also has a locking centre differential with the option of adding a locking rear differential, all of which means it should be pretty good at getting out of slippery situations. The new Defender also gets what's called a satin protective film. And you can see in this Pangea green, it gives it this matte finish that you can see. And I've also just realized I'm nicely camouflaged with this paintwork, but I promise that wasn't intentional. But anyway, this protective film gives UV protection and it also protects the bodywork. So you can take the film off and replace it and at will cost less than respraying the car. 
Now, there are two different versions you'll be able to buy, a three-door Defender 90 and a larger five-door 110. A couple of commercial variants will join the lineup later and an even bigger 130 could arrive too. The 90 can be specced with five or six seats, while the 110 has five or a five plus two layout. And whether you choose the 90 or the 110, there are a huge amount of packs, options and accessories you can fit to the Defender, like the winch on the nose of this 90, to help personalise it to your liking. They're both available in trim levels called Defender, S, SE, HSE and for its first year, Defender X. The 90 is priced from £40,000, while the 110 is £45,240. This puts it between the Discovery Sport and Discovery in Land Rover's lineup. So inside the new Defender, we're in the 90 now, and you can see it's got a nice, simple, back to basics, really interesting design that feels very different from lots of other new cars that you see now. So it's, it's very honest, it's very durable, and you can see the build quality. This is a pre-production model. So obviously the ones that you'll see in the showrooms that will turn up on your doorstep if you order one will be slightly different from this, but this is very promising indeed. And it's a really interesting layout. This bit here will be metal. It's not on this pre-production model, but it will be. Similarly, on the steering wheel, these bits are gonna be metal as well. And it's a really nice design touch having these exposed nuts and bolts on the door here. So it's really interesting. And also, you can spec the front of your Defender in a few different ways. So you can have a traditional two seats in the front with a clear space in between here. You can have two seats in the front with an extended center console as the 110 that we have here today has. And you can also, which is what we've got here, have three seats in the front, which includes this jump seat in the middle, which you can add as an optional extra. So you can see, pull this down here, and you lower it to reveal two cup holders and, very cleverly, a 12 volt socket or two and a couple of USB ports at the back of it as well. Now, space up front does seem very impressive, even with this sunroof. If you're especially tall, I can't really see you having any problem at all in the Defender. It feels like a fairly wide interior as well, it doesn't feel cramped. And I'll just show you, I'll look weird for a second, but I'll get into this middle seat here and just test out exactly what it feels like. And impressively, even though it's quite an odd sensation getting into it because you go quite high, you still have loads of headroom, which is really good. Obviously, you can see feet room, my size 10s are slightly cramped and you'll probably be have to be quite friendly with your passengers, but it's still a useful addition. Certainly from a practical point of view, you can see that being a really useful asset for the Defender. Now, I'll just get back into the driver's seat now. And I'll point out again that on the steering wheel, you're gonna have these physical buttons on here to control the driver display and also this infotainment system, which is new. At launch, the engine lineup includes the four cylinder P300 and six cylinder P400 petrol engines. And you also have the option of a pair of four cylinder diesels, the D200 and D240. A plug-in hybrid version will also join the lineup in the future. So that was a first look at the brand new Land Rover Defender. If you've enjoyed this video, give us a like. If you've got any questions at all about the car, leave a comment below and we'll get back to you. And please make sure that you're subscribed to our channel because we really do have loads of videos coming out every week. And of course, do not forget, if you wanna buy any new car whatsoever, go to whatcar.com and there you can get the best deal.